This demonstration covers the pre-installation activities and the installation of a single VRPA cluster for Recover Point for Virtual Machines 5.0. Recover Point for Virtual Machines allows replicating virtual machines with virtual machine level granularity. This solution runs in VMware virtual environments and does not depend on any specific hardware. Recover Point for VMs 5.0 supports more than one traffic type on one network adapter. In low traffic or non-production deployments, all virtual network cards may be placed on the same virtual network on a single vSwitch. For this demonstration, the one vSwitch solution is chosen. The WAN, LAN and data communication happens over one connection. The network adapter topology must be the same for every VRPA in the cluster and for every cluster in the system. Set up the VM kernel ports. Assign IP addresses that are on a routable subnet or on the same subnet as the VRPA iSCSI interfaces. The VRPA iSCSI IP addresses will be assigned when deploying the VRPA cluster. Select the ESXi host, click the Manage tab, Storage, and then Storage Adapters and create a Software iSCSI adapter. Click Add and confirm that you want to add the Software iSCSI adapter. The Software iSCSI adapter appears in the list of storage adapters. The VRPA iSCSI target ports will automatically be discovered after Recover Point for VMs has been installed. The iSCSI VM kernel ports and the VRPA iSCSI ports will be on the same broadcast domain. The VM kernel ports should be bound to the software iSCSI adapter. If they are on different broadcast domains, do not use port binding. Verify that the port group policy for every VM kernel you created is compliant. Repeat the VM kernel creation, iSCSI software adapter enabling, and the network port binding on all the ESXi hosts in this VMware cluster. The Recover Point for VMs installation package can be downloaded from support.emc.com. The Recover Point for VMs installation package contains the Recover Point for VMs release in open virtualization appliance format. This OVA file is used to deploy VRPAs. In the vSphere web client, right click on the ESX host and select Deploy OVF template. In the Select Source screen, specify the VRPA OVA package location. In the Review Details screen, review the general properties of this OVA package. To accept, click Next. In the Accept License Agreement screen, if you accept the terms of the EMC End User License Agreement, click Accept and then Next. In the Select Name and Folder screen, enter the name you wish to assign to this VRPA and select the ESXi cluster used for storing the VRPA cluster in this vCenter environment. In the Select Configuration screen, select the desired configuration profile. In the Select Storage screen, select the disk format, storage policy and high performance data store which is best practice, to host the VRPA virtual machine files. In the Setup Network screen, select the destination network for the VRPA management network. In the Customize Template screen, enter the VRPA management network IP address, subnet mask, and gateway. The use of DHCP and IPv6 is also possible. Click Finish to create the VRPA. Under Recent Tasks, the progress of deploying the VRPA is shown. When the VRPA is created, the VRPA Summary tab shows the VRPA package contents as specified. The selected IP policy will be implemented automatically when the VRPA is powered up. In a supported web browser, enter https colon slash slash and then the IP address where the IP address is the IP address of the VRPA in the cluster being installed. In the VRPA landing page, click Recover Point for VMs Deployer. If prompted, enter the login details for the box management user and click Sign In. Select the install of a VRPA cluster wizard.
In the version requirements verification window, we select the third option, do not check version requirements for these demonstration purposes. In prerequisites, provide the vCenter information. Click connect and then confirm vCenter's SSL certificate. At this point, pre-deployment validations were started. Review the pre-deployment validation results. If any of the validation result in an error, fix them before proceeding. If the error can be fixed, the Fix button appears in the Auto Fix column. In Environment Settings, define the required settings. To include more than one DNS server IP address, separate additional IP address with a semicolon. Select the VRPA used for the single VRPA cluster installation and then retrieve the associated data stores. Select the data store to place the recover point for VM's repository volume. When only one VRPA is selected, a message comes up and says that high availability and non-disruptive upgrade support needs at least two VRPAs in a cluster. In cluster settings, provide the requested information. The cluster management IP address, the network adapter configuration as prepared in the ESXi cluster. In our case, all the networks, WAN, LAN and data use one vSwitch, one network adapter. Provide the netmask and default gateways. The deployment process can be monitored throughout this phase. Once the installation completed successfully, click Finish to return to the home page. A single VRPA cluster was created and can now be used for local replication after registering ESXi clusters with it. For remote replication, set up additional VRPA clusters and then connect them. In the Recover Point for VMs Deployer homepage, select the Connect VRPA Cluster Wizard. The two RPVM clusters need to be connected for remote replication. When adding an additional RPVM cluster to an existing RPVM system, the cluster must be clean, meaning that no configuration changes, including license installations, have been made to the new cluster. In the prerequisite steps, follow the instructions on the screen and check off the prerequisites if they are fulfilled. Next, enter the remote WAN IP and login credentials. Additional gateways for the current cluster can be added and the default gateway viewed. Click Connect to start the process. In the Add Cluster Progress step, observe that the cluster connects to the current cluster. The connection progress can be monitored throughout this phase. When 100% completion is reached, it says that the clusters were successfully connected. This procedure needs to be repeated to connect additional VRPA clusters. You must register ESXi clusters that will be hosting protected VMs or their copies. Access the vSphere Web Client. In the vSphere Web Client homepage, click Recover Point for VMs Management, Administration, and then VRPA Clusters. Select the ESX Cluster tab. Click Add to register an ESXi cluster. Verify that the connectivity status is OK. If there are connectivity issues with the cluster, click Troubleshoot. Next, let's start the steps to protect the VM. Select the VM to be protected. Right-click on it and choose All Recover Point for Virtual Machines, and then Protect. This will start the Protect VMs Wizard, where the process guides through creating consistency groups, creating journals, and VM copies. This ends the demonstration deploying a single VR.